Welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals. This time around, I'm going to look at an actively managed member of our list of 72 favorite funds, namely MAN GLG Japan Core Alpha Equity. The fund's investment objective is to provide a high total return suitable relative to the risks involved over the long term. And as its name suggests, the collective invests primarily in securities issued by Japanese companies. As I sit here, the portfolio is very tight-knit, just 43 holdings, so this is a high conviction portfolio. The top 10 names represent 47% of the assets under management. The leading positions are Toyota Motor, Japan Post, Honda Motor, Megabank Mitsubishi UFJ Financial, and then Nippon Steel and Sumitomo Metal. By sector, financial services, industrials and consumer discretionary stocks dominate at 33, 17 and 15% of the portfolio respectively. By contrast, the fund has no exposure at all to telecoms, healthcare or consumer staples, sectors which could be classified as expensive defensives. This fund style is clearly therefore much more about large cap value. The experienced team of money managers led by Stephen Harker focus on companies which are out of favour with the wider market and trading, in theory at least, on cheap valuations. If companies can be found at compelling value where the business is not in terminal decline, the team reasons that any shorter term issues holding the company back will pass and the valuation will at some stage revert to a more usual, higher level. Do note, however, that this style can lead to shorter term periods of underperformance relative to the benchmark, which in this case is the Topics Total Return Index. The fund comes with an ongoing charge figure of 1.08%, so you do have to pay for the manager's expertise. And for those who put faith in such things, the fund comes with a three-star Morningstar ranking. As a final point, uh, Man GLG Japan Core Alpha Equity is eligible for SIPs, ICES and dealing accounts, and the minimum investment is just the one share, although they do cost over £205 each at the moment. So those are the mechanics. The question to address next is why could investors consider this fund for portfolio inclusion today? And I think there are three perfectly possible reasons. The first is that Japan's stock market is not trading at or very near its all-time highs, unlike, say, the UK or USA. In fact, at around 22,500, the best-known index, the Nikkei 225, trades more than 40% below the peak it reached all the way back in December 1989. Now that may catch the eye of contrarians, especially as strategists suggest Japan does not look expensive, using valuation metrics such as price to earnings or price to book value. Second, Japan's stock market has done badly because it's been in a low growth, almost deflationary funk ever since the end of the 1980s. But Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda are both trying to do something about that. Since his December 2012 general election triumph, Prime Minister Abe has launched his Three Arrows, or Abenomics, program. This includes huge fiscal stimulus from government spending, huge monetary stimulus from negative interest rates and quantitative easing, and a package of social, economic and political reforms, which are also encouraging Japanese companies to be more shareholder friendly. Dividends and share buybacks are on the rise, and GDP has grown quarter on quarter for eight periods in a row. That's the best run since, wait for it, 1989. In addition, Japan is the best performing major geographic region in stock market terms since Abe came to power in late 2012. The third reason to look at this fund potentially is that MA at Man GLG Japan Core Alpha Fund has a value bias as already described and it's possible to argue that value is coming back into fashion. Growth stocks, such as those in technology, well they've wobbled in the USA amid the Facebook scandal, doubts over Tesla's car shipment targets, Google's rising costs and Apple's slowing smartphone sales. This possible change in sentiments reached Japan. The tech-laden Mother's Index is down 7% this year, while the Nikkei is down just under 2%, for example. If, and I stress, if this trend continues, this could play to Man GLG Japan Core Alpha Fund style, and overall the fund does have a good record of meeting its mandate, as we can see here at least over the last five years. However, we must always remember that past performance is no guarantee for the future and the MAN GLG Japan Core Alpha Equity Fund may not be suitable for all investors, also for three reasons. First, Japan's stock market performance has tailed off a bit in 2018. The headline Nikkei 225 index is down for the year, 
outperforming only the UK amongst the major regional indices in the year to date. This is a huge contrast to the second place ranking out of seven over the last 12 months and those market leading returns we saw already since 2012 in local currency capital terms. Second reason why it might, this fund may not be suitable for everybody? Well, there seems to be a growing risk that Shinzo Abe himself could be unseated as leader of the Liberal Democratic Party and thus as Prime Minister. Abe must face an election for the party leadership by September to clinch another three-year term. But a succession of scandals, particularly one involving the cut price sale of public land to a school connected to the Prime Minister's wife and the resignation of a leading civil servant at the Financial Ministry with harassment allegations, they're both hurting his approval ratings. Mr Abe's dream of leading Japan into the 2020 Olympics is in danger and therefore, potentially, from a financial market's point of view, is the Abenomics project, which has done so much to support the Nikkei 225 since that first Abe election win in December 2012. Third reason to think carefully, well, there's still a way to go for Abenomics to truly prove itself. Inflation is still way below the 2% official target. And the Bank of Japan is still holding interest rates at minus, yes, minus 0.1% and running a massive quantitative easing or QE scheme. That's worth some 80 trillion yen or 535 billion pounds a year, more than the Bank of England's done over the past decade. No one knows, no one knows what will happen if and when the Bank of Japan raises interest rates again. Although, as we can see here, Japan's had zero or negative rates for the last 25 years or so. Even then, inflation is still below target, government debt is huge, and a planned 2019 hike in consumption tax to help balance the books remains a matter of hot debate. It may help the finances, it may not GDP growth. What this does go to show is that investors must therefore do their research on MAN GLG Japan Core Alpha Fund to make sure that it fits with their overall strategy, target returns, time horizon and appetite for risk before they put any capital to work. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.